Welcome inside the WOSN studios. Time for another edition of Press Row. Joined as always by Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz. I'm Matt Finkel. Lima Cup was Tuesday night, huge game. Great for the Lima community. Half of our panel was there. We all covered it, WIMA, 104.9 The Eagle. Of course, you can catch a replay on WOSN this week as well. Lima senior victorious. Are they as good as the preseason hype? I think so. I, I think this is a team that is built to make a postseason run, a deep postseason run, and you don't want to put any undue expectations on the squad, but I think if, if, if they don't get to the regional championship game, something's gone wrong. I think they're good enough to get that far. I think they're very good, yes. And I think their rotation now that Marquavius Wilson is eligible and there had been talk of whether or not he would be even a part of this team this year, uh, from what it sounds like, he had to meet some expectations and qualifications, if you will. Sounded like Dusty Rhodes there, but that's kind of cool. Um, in order to come back, he comes back, he starts, he has five points in the win for uh, Lima Cedar. And but his impact went much deeper than just those five points. Right. He did a good job defensively. He did a good job on the, the glass. And we saw a number of times where you would see Marquavius Wilson pull down the rebound, and then he was the one bringing up into the front court and then setting up the Lima Senior offense. Well, I think what it does, too, for the Spartans now is, like we were talking about, I think it makes their rotation just that more unique also because they only went nine deep on Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. I went back and looked. Uh, after the game and noticed that, you know, four guys came off the bench and of those four, Rico Stafford was really the one who saw significant minutes. Him and Jar Ward were yeah. the only two. Marquise Miller was literally on the floor for eight-tenths of a second, mm -hmm. and that was the final eight-tenths of a second of the third quarter. If this team with Wilson on the floor in game situation, he's been practicing with the starters the last two weeks, according to Coach Quincy Simpson. If he and this group – you know, of cohesiveness can get together at the right time, very, very possible that a deep tournament run could be had by the Spartans. Well, I think the, the addition of Marquavius is a, a perfect time as well because yes. he's going to be fresh and eager, whereas, you know, sometimes halfway through the season, your regulars start to hit that lull a little bit. But uh, you got to remember, uh, we tend to forget now since it's been a whole half season of him not playing. Last year at Elida, at the end of the year, he was a huge factor really the the one kind of one a to dakota matthias so this is a great addition for lima senior and you know can they live up to the hype well no because hype is always uh, completely irrational uh, but i think it's always been understood that the goal of this team was to at the very least get to the state tournament so uh, that really was put out there from the beginning that that was their goal now of course the the most immediate goal is to win the three rivers athletic conference which they will likely be able to do if they can win at St. John's on Friday. One other thing, too, that I want to mention about Marquavius Wilson, and I think that, you know, Todd, obviously you weren't there, but Mike Miller was there from mm -hmm. WIMA. Mark, you and I are right there. The three of us are sitting there up top at Lima Senior. Marquavius Wilson comes out in that starting lineup with that warm-up jacket off, and it was like – He's got a man body now. Yeah, that's what I say. He really the matured. The weight room has been very kind to Mr. Wilson. Well, Monday night on the warm-up, we talked to, to Q about one of the things they were able to do. Because remember, this is a team that had three separate 10-day breaks in between games yes. this year. And he talked about how they were able to get in the weight room during that time. And certainly, you look at Marquavius Wilson, and he, he couldn't play football, had to set up the first half of the basketball season. He spent some time in that weight room. He's also added a good inch and a half of height. I mean, he had a Division One look to yeah. him last night as far as the body. And he was able to showcase and himself. He's in front also of, of the too. age where right. you start seeing those transformations, that's, that's where you exactly go from being a boy yes. teen go. to a teen yes. man. Yeah. It, it, assuming that you're of that age, of a normal age, that sophomore to junior is where you'll see the jump. I mean, Dantez Walton, I think, is going through a similar jump in his ability, his physicality, his mentality. Uh, to me, that's where a guy really makes a jump. That's why if you see a kid that's a sophomore is not much better as a junior, that's probably all you're getting out of him. But uh, Marquavius Wilson obviously had some downtime, as Mark was saying, and he was pumping iron and eating his Wheaties, as they used to say. And <laughs> yes. He's, he's every bit grown up right now. It's fun to watch guys make that, that leap, as to steal a phrase from Bill Simmons, I guess. But playing in Division One, that's where the real challenge comes in for this Lima senior team, right? The, a lot of the mm -hmm. Area teams are smaller schools. They do get D1 schools in the track, but 
I don't know if they've faced the competition that they might face in a regional semi or final yet. Do you well, guys agree? Toledo Clearly. St. John. Toledo St. John's already. You know, they played them once this year. Second game of the year. Second game of the year, and they lost in they, overtime. Yes, they go up to Toledo St. John's this week. But right now, if you look at Division One basketball, the number one team is also in the Northwest District, and that is Sylvania Southview. And that could be a team potentially, you know, I haven't looked at the bracket there, that could be maybe a district final, more than likely in the regionals. You know, and that would be, you know, two teams from Northwest against a Lakewood St. Ed's type, whoever, that west side of Cleveland, whoever decides to want to come west uh, when the tournament draws take place. But uh, very, very possible that, you know, Lima Senior, Sylvania Southview Regional Semi, with the rights to play for uh, a regional title to come forth in uh, the middle of uh, March. Yeah, I think it, and answering your question, I think it would have been very, very interesting to have if you could switch times. In other words, if we could take this Lima senior team and put it in the track of last year or two years yeah. ago, oh boy, where there would be some real monster collisions. Oh boy, uh, the league has taken a step back. It's still a very tough. I think league, it's a younger but, league than right. what we've and, seen in and, years yeah, past. That happens, yeah. but. I don't think there's anybody they're going to play that will be as good as whoever they get in the regional finals or at the state tournament. And they're they still would have whacked Oregon Clay by 45 <laughs> at least. <laughs> and they should have scored a hundo on Oregon Clay, but they, they dumped the they bench. They let off. So, yeah, they let off go. a little. All right, well, staying on the hardwood, Western Buckeye League, we've got a big one on Friday. It's St. Mary's versus Salina, both undefeated in league play. Who do you like and why? I'm going with Salina because they're at home. I think the Salina Fieldhouse does have a, a little bit of a home court flavor, and no, it's not because I've got on <laughs> the green either that had no bearance into these picks today. But I really am impressed with St. Mary's and the job and the turnaround that they have made under Dan Hegemeyer. He knew it was going to take some time, but this team is a cut from the mold of Dan Hegemeyer teams that he had like at New Knoxville and stuff like that. They, in my opinion, are the junkyard dogs of the Western Buckeye League. They will fight, scrap, claw. They'd gouge your eyes out. I mean, they'd pull your teeth out if they could get away with it on the floor. They will fight for 32 minutes with Salina. But I think Salina is just that much better at home yeah, on, I, on Friday. I think you're right, the being at home. And I, I haven't seen St. Mary's play, but uh, I, I've, I've liked Salina all season long. And, yes. and I, I'm sticking with that, especially with them at home. But that doesn't take away from what appears to be happening at St. Mary's. And, and we knew what Dan Hegemeyer could do, that was not really in question, no matter what ended up happening at St. Mary's. But uh, the fact that I think he knew and they knew that he could take the time, build the program, there was none of this, well, first year he didn't get it done, he's out of here, this guy doesn't know what he's doing, because we already knew that he did. <laughs> and perhaps now this is the first year of what we could see with St. Mary's down the road of consistently being a contender in the WBL. And I, I've said it for years with them and Wapakoneta, why can't they be better in basketball? You, you don't need to be just a football school. Uh, that's old thinking. And I think St. Mary's is starting to get there, but I, I like Salina in this matchup. Biggest matchup between these two rivals in 10 years. You go back to the 2004-2005 season. They Josh were, Leslie. Josh, I was going to say Josh exactly. Leslie years. They were tied for first place in WBL going into the final game of the regular season. St. Mary's won that game, won the league title. Salina finished tied for second place in the league. Biggest game since then, I think Salina does get the win for, for a lot of the reasons why we've already talked about here. I just think the overall depth of Salina, the way they can attack the floor. But if Derek J gets hot for St. Mary's, oh, yeah. watch out. So, St. Mary's is the team who a year ago in the tournament gave Elida the sectional final. Yes, they yeah. did. They gave Elida everything they could handle and then some. I mean, it took Dakota Mathias putting his foot on the gas pedal in the fourth and saying, all right, boys, we're going to win this game. I believe, if I remember right, St. Mary's had the lead going into halftime, I and it was so. a two-point yeah. game after three. Elida pulled away at the end, but it would not surprise me come tournament time. Now, granted, this is a long time from now, that first week of March, that we're sitting here talking about the district and talking potentially of St. Mary's getting an opportunity to play uh, in the districts coming up. For Salina's side, a good way to win a league title is to get the cream of the crop in the league at home. Yep. They played yeah. Salina. Yeah. Def Salina got Defiance, OG, and St. Mary's all at home this year. So. Yes, they did. And St. Mary's has got a little bit tougher schedule from here on out. Salina's already beat OG right. and Defiance. They still have to take on Wapakoneta. But you got to think if Salina wins this, they're going to be in the driver's seat. It's over. 
NWC now, and just like football season, it felt like it was wide open till till everybody squared off in the end. It's kind of that way now. Is there a favorite? No. Here's why. A ask me again uh, Friday night about 10:30. Okay. <laughs> Shake up the. But We're waiting and, on and what? Even, Grove? Ask and, again even later. Then, and even then, I don't know if there's a favorite at that point. And here's why: right. you've got Crestview Grove playing the last week of yep, the regular right. season that Friday night. If they hold serve, that will be for the league title. Now, you've also still got Spencerville in the equation with one loss. Mm -hmm. However, they've got Grove Friday night mm -hmm. at home. The next week, they traveled to Crestview. So the Bearcats, this is test time right here. And Spencerville's playing a lot better basketball yes, they right are. now than they yeah. were beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. yeah, I they're, saw they're getting healthier, and, yeah. that, and they're getting healthier now, which helps. And sorry to cut you off, Todd, but you know, losing Mason Nurse and losing um, – Goki in the Paulding game really hurt this team and that that lone loss in the league on the road at Paulding, that initial league matchup. Paulding's not an easy place to no. win. That's where Crestview's at this week. Yes. Yeah, I saw that I did the Spencerville Bluffton game last week yeah. and, and you can tell Spencerville starting to put some things together. Uh, Bluffton gave them a nice run, but uh, Spencerville, uh, they got some horses and things are starting to fall into place. But again, uh, this week with Columbus Grove, you know, Spencerville's already put themselves one loss down, as you talked about. So the, the pressure is really on them. And then, of course, let's not forget about Crestview, the, the team that ran the table last year. Right. You know, Connor Lotzenheiser can score in bunches. Ooh, can he here, ever? Here they come. So uh, a nice little three-way battle at the top. And they gave LCC absolutely yeah. fits a couple weeks ago at Monsignor Gymnasium. The NWC is so nutty. You've got a Delphus Jefferson team, which is 7-7 seven and seven overall, a good, a good Jefferson team, winless in the conference. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I think it's better overall this year in the NWC yep. than we've seen it in a while. Top to bottom, absolutely. Yeah. And Bluffton is 11-3. One and two in the North. Right, they have two South. conference losses already. Yeah. Right, and they were undefeated for their much only of the non-league of the loss is Ottawa Glendorf. Right, so we'll see how that plays out. Going to be fun to watch. Super Bowl Sunday is this week. Really? Who do you like and why, if you care at all? And just as a side note, I don't know how you guys feel about this. The Roman numeral system. I'm probably the only one who's given this any thought. Really bothers me because it's X. It's X I or no, it's I X X L I X X L I X which is 49, right? right? Shouldn't it just be I-L? No. That's not how they do it. I know we're Super talking Bowl about 2,000. Ill. Yeah, there'll be they Super Bowl They're Beastie Boys on us over Next here. year's going to be that's Super. That's why the NFL wants to get rid of the Roman numeral system, just refer to it as the Arabic number, numbers. Right? Yeah. Well, next year's going to be Super Bowl or Super Bowl L, which will be cool, but people will think it's just going to be an extra L maybe. I don't know. So but they've downgraded from the extra large to the large is what you're saying. Right. No Super respect Bowl 40. for us Husky Mark boys. Mark covered Super Bowl 40. That's right, right? XL, that's right. All right, yeah. but who do we like tomorrow? I think it's going to be actually a really, or not tomorrow, Sunday. I think it's going to be a really good game. I took, I'm thinking it's going to be New England. They're just, they've been the cream of the crop the last six weeks of the regular See, season. See, I thought you wore the green shirt for the Scott <laughs> Green Seattle Super. Right, it does that have is, that, that type of green. Seahawk color there. Yeah. It does have a little bit of Seahawk color, but and it's got the blue. You, you got some Skittles in your pocket? No, they're at my desk. <laughs> I'll tell you what scares me, though, about that pick is Seattle shouldn't be here. Right. Green Bay manhandled Seattle, and they choked that game away which tells you Seattle will take advantage and end up winning the Super Bowl. You're right, though, that New England's been playing very well the last couple of weeks, maybe four weeks of the regular season. The playoffs, they obviously steamrolled the Colts. Uh, I, I think the Patriots, this is, this is the crowning achievement on the Belichick-Brady era. If, if, if they win, is Tom Brady the greatest quarterback in the NFL history? I think he's already in the conversation. I'm not he's definitely he's, he's in the conversation. I'm not talking about the conversation. I'm talking about is he Does the he need greatest? That Does fourth? he pass Joe Montana as the greatest? I, you know, it's debatable. Mm. I think those are always That's hard arguments. That's what we're here for. Yeah, those are – I always have trouble with comparing players that were from different epochs, if you will. You know, things have changed so much. But certainly he's, he'd be one of the guys in our discussion. But uh, – I and, you know – Seattle, I, I'm tired of their act already, you know, with with Sherman always running his mouth and Lynch apparently not running his mouth. and yeah, He's just skills. here so he won't be fined. Yeah, he's so. just there. For you know why I'm here. Something. <laughs> you know we why. Know that why was, that was his Wednesday message. You know I, why I'm, I'm here. I'm still in shock how Green Bay literally choked that game away. Yep. There's not a big enough deal being made about that except probably in Green, Green Bay. Green Bay, for sure, yeah. It's uh, not being made because of what happened job. three hours later. Right, right. exactly. Where which we've had can, that crammed down Which conveniently down has taken away the discussion from a racist nickname for one of the headline teams in the league, the history of concussions, 
player violence on and off the field and the fact that you have players killing themselves because of trauma to their brain. All that's being swept under the rug this past two weeks because of this deflate issue, which I think was a PR stunt by the NFL to get the attention away from the real issues. Wow, conspiracy, we just went to Roswell. Conspiracy there. theorist Mark Coots on the case. Area 51 right I, here, I'll, fellas. I'll, I'll again, the NFL knows, guy, but. No, the NFL knows how to steer the media to get it to talk about whatever it wants. I don't originally I didn't think it was a great thing that they're talking about the Flake Gate, but if they're if they're distracting from other things, I like mean you having say, multiple press conferences from Bill Belichick where he doesn't say anything new, it's just extending the story. And you know Roger Goodell's got his state of the league address coming up later this week. He's going to be talking about that and not about real issues. I always enjoy the Super Bowl because it's a giant distraction for the country, and apparently we need to be distracted from a lot of real issues that the NFL has, but I'll be enjoying it. And you're a Giants fan, so you like the distraction to begin with. You've of course. actually had some success <laughs> in the yeah. Super Bowl. And yes, I've, the Super Bowl has been good the last uh, four or five years for me as a Giants fan, but me and 112 million others will be tuning in on Sunday. That's going to do it for this edition of Press Row. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy your games this weekend.